Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off talking about Nintendo Switch emulation with Yuzu Forks Sudachi and Suyu. And it appears that both Yuzu and Sudachi's discords were shut down. So here is the notice the developer of Sudachi got from Discord. It's titled, Account Disabled, Violation of TOS Community Guidelines Notification. And here's the reason. You may not share content that violates anyone's intellectual property or other rights. Now, as far as I know, both of these projects are still active. For example, here is Sudachi's GitHub account, and the latest release is still there. And Suyu is self-hosted, and I don't see that one going anywhere. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit confused about this one. I'm assuming it was Nintendo that went after them. Yet the Yuzu Discord, although closed, is still up. It has not been taken down. I would argue that this is yet another blow to Yuzu successors, and I'm assuming that these emulators are going to continue on here and probably just find somewhere else to talk. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. And speaking about Nintendo, next up we're talking about Pretendo. And for those who may not be aware, Pretendo stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano. And it's a free and open source replacement for 3DS and Wii U servers. Now, I would argue Nintendo just had a pretty big announcement. They say now that Nintendo Network has shut down, we are finally able to announce our latest project, SSSL. This allows Wii U the ability to have limited access to Pretendo without homebrew using only DNS changes. They do point out that SSSL is only available for Wii U systems running firmware version 5.5.5 or higher, and it's not available for 3DS. The pros here is that this does not require homebrew. It's very easy to set up. However, only a subset of services are supported. It lacks additional features and patches, it may not function under certain ISP-related conditions, and it requires changing network settings to disconnect. In my opinion, this is a pretty cool option for those people who do not want to go the homebrew route. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Moving on, and we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation with PCSX2. And PCSX2 got a minor update that I think has a big impact. Now, I don't know about you, but I prefer dark mode as opposed to light mode. And they've made a change here to light mode that I can get behind. So it says this PR tweaks the color scheme of BPM's light mode to be less bright. So here is the before, and no surprise, it's pretty bright. And here is the after, and it's much more gray, and in my opinion, a lot better looking. And speaking about color preference and arguably light sensitivity. Next up, we're talking about Virtual Boy emulation on the 3DS. And Red Viper just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 0.9.3 is the latest update. They say this release features much smoother gameplay, partially thanks to running the 3DS displays at 50 Hz. Also includes a number of compatibility improvements, especially with Homebrew. If you are curious about Red Viper, I'll drop a link to it in the description below and feel free to check it out. In my opinion, I think a lot more people are going to start modding their 3DSs considering the online service is no longer available. Next up, we're talking about arguably one of my favorite collaborations or crossovers or whatever you want to call it here of the year. And that is Vampire Survivors and Contra. Yes, Contra has joined this game. The results here are absolutely fantastic. I am super excited about this DLC. It launches May 9th. Now this DLC is called Operation Guns and it's not messing around. There's 11 new characters, 22 new fully automatic weapons, new maps, and new music. I am super excited about this one. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Moving on, and we're talking about a brand new handheld by Ambernick. It's called the RG28XX. From my understanding, it's going to be the exact same as the 35XXH. I could be wrong. Just a different form factor. And I'm looking at this thing, and although it does look interesting, it also looks super uncomfortable. So for some context, here's the RG35XX+. Plus. I've reviewed this one on the channel. Now holding this, my hands rest nicely on this case. It's a nice fit and finish. But taking a look at the RG28XX, and you go from holding something nice and comfortably to holding something with strictly your fingertips. I could be wrong. Maybe if you've got small hands, this will be great. 
but I think this is going to be a little bit too small to be comfortable. But I will say I do like the looks of this thing. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Do you think this is going to be comfortable to use and do you like the looks of it? Next up, we're talking about a ROM hack that I think a lot of people will be interested in. It's called Womp's Fortress. And they say here it's Super Mario 64 and Zelda. Now, in my opinion, this ROM hack kind of makes Zelda not necessarily feel like Zelda anymore. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, I have played the heck out of Ocarina of Time. I have played the heck out of a bunch of different ROM hacks. I have played the heck out of a bunch of randomizers. And this, to me, breathes new life into the game. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Is this a ROM hack that would interest you? Next up, we've talked about this one before when it was just a rumor, and now it's a reality. The Rogue Prince of Persia has just received its very first trailer. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. For reference here, the studio working on this one is the same studio that was behind Dead Cells. And the gameplay here, although unexpected, is buttery smooth. To be honest with you, I can't wait to see the finished product on this one, and the early access for this game starts on May 14th. It's arriving a lot sooner than I thought it was going to. Next up, we're talking about a newly announced gaming handheld, and this one is called the Sui Play OX1. They say here that this is the first handheld gaming device with native Web3 capabilities, which is interesting because just the other day we talked about the BitBoy 1, which was revealed as the first ever Web3 gaming device. It appears we've got two first ever devices. Now, in my opinion, I think this thing is going to be very expensive. I mean, the BitBoy 1 is priced at, I think, $500 and it's powered by an RK35XX chip. It's very similar to an Ambernic device that sells for a fraction of the cost. I don't know what this thing is powered by. I don't know the price point. But what I do know is this kind of stuff does not necessarily interest me. I am reporting on it though, and let me know your thoughts about crypto handhelds. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state. <laughs>